How's it going again everyone? Welcome to another Gwent video with me, KBT. And uh, this video is dedicated to the many different ways they've created spy effects. But there's not just one spy effect anymore. At the minute we've got three different types. And they, they pull cards out of your deck in three different ways. Which is really interesting, I like that. So what cards used to do, they used to be crazy effective. You used to place the card down on the opponent's side of the board and the opponent got the strength, so that was the negative from it. That is still in this game, all the spies have to be placed down on the opponent's side, and that is called disloyal. Uh, any loyal ones go on your side and disloyal go on the opponent's side. And in the old Gwent, you used to draw two cards, uh, and that was it, and then your turn was over. So, you got a two card lead, two card advantage. Now I know you're using the spy, and then picking one card up, and that's kind of a trade, that's not a card advantage, but you also end your turn, so that was a card advantage. So you got two card advantage for doing that, and it was also pretty imbalanced. Monsters and Squirtle only had, um, and Skellige, only had access to the neutral spy, which was an amazing spy, but it's still only one. And Northern Rounds and Nilfgaard had access to four. And they would just pull out so many cards, it was ridiculous, because they could medic, you know, them out of the graveyard, they could decoy them, Nilfgaard could even use a leader ability to pull one out of the opponent's discard pile that he just played so they would end up drawing like half a deck so it really needed to be changed and they have done it so there's three different effects that they've done now so the first effect if you've done any digging on what cards are available for this new Gwent game then you've probably seen it because it's on a screenshot on the main website and it was in the trailers and stuff and it's the card Distra Distra I'm not very good at pronouncing it it's to the right okay so it's just a neutral 8 strength card non-hero and it's disloyal Disloyal means it goes on the opponent's side. And so it can be decoyed and medicked up because it's not a hero card, which is good or bad depending on who plays it, I guess. But the effect is this, the mechanic is this. You draw two cards from the deck, one is face forward and one is face away. And you choose one of them and put the other one back in the deck. So effectively, you look at the one that you can see and say, do I really, really want that or is it absolutely terrible? And then you take a gamble if you don't want it on the one that you can't see and you put the other one back in the deck. So you only draw one card from this. So effectively you are just replacing a card, but you get a choice of two. So I'm not sure how good that is, because you are giving the opponent eight strength, which is reasonably high, I think. You know, um, six to 15 is like the higher range, I think. So you're replacing one card. I don't know how good that is, because if you didn't have the spy in there anyway, you wouldn't be given the opponent strength and you could have got one of those other cards anyway. So, I'm not sure how good that ability is. If you guys can think of a way this really works, then that would be really good. I think if you medic it out and, you know, decoy it and such, then it's going to be useful because then you're going to get multiple uses out of it and you are going to start gaining cards then um, because you still get the strength from the medic as well as the card from him and, you know, that's probably one way that is useful, but just using it base doesn't seem useful at all because you're just replacing a card for another. So the second mechanic is Carcass Eater. This belongs to the monster deck and is given to the Frightener and the Catacan cards at the moment. And what they do is you effectively draw one card out of your deck and that's the card you get and that's it. But then you also get the added benefit of banishing one card from the opponent's graveyard. So what we learn from this, it's a really interesting card, I really like it. What we know from this now is banishing cards is a thing. I think I saw a little bit of footage where someone was banishing a card. I couldn't tell, but it had like a, a shovel icon and the, the opponent played it and then something happened to the, the player's discard pile, the opposing player's discard pile. So banishing does seem to be a thing and I assume it's like Magic the Gathering's banishing or something varying like that anyway, where discard pile of graveyard, you can pull them back out and stuff, but banishing means they're completely gone from the game. It's kind of like what happened in Old Gwent with the Bovine Defense Force. When it died, it didn't go into the graveyard, it just sort of disappeared. So that's probably what it is. And I absolutely love this idea. It's really good, right? Because for monsters, if they play anything like they used to, with a lot of muster cards and wild hunt cards and fog bound and all that, um, you're going to get a lot of cards that you, you don't want duplicates of in your hand, okay? So you don't want to play your spy on the turn one because you're more likely to get all that. And that was the problem with spies with monsters if you decoyed them up 
uh, with old Gwen. You, you couldn't play them till later and, you know, it was okay. But this way, these cards are good for later because you play all your, your musters and stuff and then on turn two or three, when your opponent has played some really good cards, you know, that are strength 12 or something, like Olaf used to be in Skellige deck, you can banish it. One card that's really good to banish, which I can see, I haven't done a video on this yet, but I will because it's a really important ability card, is an empowered card. I think it's empower or empowerment. I will check that for the video. But effectively, this card like keeps getting more strength every time it gets played out of the graveyard. So the card in question is something like Crash and Crate. I don't know how to pronounce that either, but it's a six strength card. And when it comes out of the graveyard, it gets another six and then another six. If you can keep pulling it out of the graveyard, it keeps getting six and six and six and six. And so that'd be a card that you want to banish. Don't let it get keep pulling out of the graveyard. And that's really effective. Squirtail also have a muster ability which pull out of the graveyard. So they're really uh, worrying because their muster abilities pull out of the graveyard. They can deco it up and replay those all the time. So maybe banish those. I really like that ability. It really suits monsters very well. And it's just a very exciting, unique, interesting interesting way of using it really because it's kind of like a free card because you're replacing the card with another card but you also get a free banishment so it's a free banishment should I say which is really nice and the third and final ability card is our old friend Avalanche is hopefully that's spelled uh, pronounced right I don't know he's the sage now he's actually changed a bit but he's a he's a nice card I really liked him in the old Gwent he has changed quite a bit he's now 10 strength used to be zero that's what made him so good because when you played it on the opponent's side you're not giving them anything and they can't medic and they can't decoy but now he's actually balanced <laughs> um 10 strength so it is reasonable stuff you're giving him he's a neutral card so everyone can have this one and this mechanic is slightly different to all the other ones so far the player who plays him plays him on the opponent's side of course and they draw two cards from their deck to their hand okay but the opponent draws one card as well but the card that the opponent draws is revealed to you. Um, one bit in this game we can see is when cards are brought back into the opponent's hand, say they're given a card, you can say if like they, it goes into the graveyard and then gets pulled back out into their hand, the opponent can see that. Normally all the cards are hidden but sometimes they're visible if they already know what they used to be. Uh, and this is what this does basically. So he draws two cards and the opponent draws one. So it's a, it's a risk, obviously. You don't want to give him something big. And, uh, but you can see what card it is. So you can prepare for that card a little bit. And you get two yourself. So, but you also give him 10 strength. So it is a risk reward card, that one. That is very good. It's balanced. I like the idea of it. You know, you're trading that card for another card and then you get one extra. But the opponent gets one as well. So it's kind of a. I like it, man. These are good cards. Now, spies are obviously not as powerful as they used to be, um, but they've got really good mechanics behind them now. It's not just a simple face roll. And I think that's what a lot of people uh, were worried about this Gwent game going to be. A lot of people didn't like the old Gwent game because at a certain point, obviously it was a progression game, um, Witcher 3 Gwent. But at a certain point, it was all just about spies. Certain decks just couldn't win because of spies. But they, they've totally reassured me, man. These spies are really interesting. Tell me what you think. I really love them. I would hope you love them. I would like... Oh, man, they're so good. I don't know what else to say. Maybe there's nothing else to say. That is it. Thanks for watching, guys. Stay tuned next time. We've got to talk about empower, empowerment. Um, I also want to talk about... Some other cards, there's some other weird cards coming out. The crones have made a, a return. They're just a muster ability though, but they're, they're siege cards, or at least one of them is. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for watching everyone, and uh, I'll see you later.